Kuzampo, you're watching Bhutan This Week. I'm Kinzong Hatton. Our top stories this week. His Majesty returns to Pinsaling after royal tour in Samrujongkar. <music> Government says the country has enough foreign reserves to meet 13 months of essential imports. <music> Bhutan Transport and Construction Authority installs GPS device in more than 200 public buses for passenger safety. His Majesty the King was in Sandrup Junker during the royal tour of the Southern Districts. His Majesty granted an audience to 227 Desups attending the 57th Batch Desung Accelerated Training Program at Dewatang. The 57th Batch Training is taking place simultaneously in Dewatang, Jimiling in Sarpang, Tashi Gatsal in Chuka, as well as Tendu and Tashi Cheling in Samchi. While in Samdu Jonkar, His Majesty also granted an audience to the district sector heads. On Tuesday, His Majesty travelled to Pinsoling. The Bhutan Transparency Initiative recommends the justice institutions in the country to establish Standard Operating Procedure or SOP, institute an independent grievance redressal organisation and improve access to justice among others. These were found out after the CSO studied the quality of services provided by various justice institutions in the country. The report called the Citizen Report on Quality of Justice Services, a first of its kind was launched last week in Paro. During the study, close to 1,900 citizens from various backgrounds were interviewed. The study assessed the quality of services provided by the courts, the Anti-Corruption Commission, the Police and Office of the Attorney General. Other institutions studied include the Bhutan National Legal Institute, the Bar Council of Bhutan and the Bhutan Alternative Dispute Resolution Centre. Uh, we were able to uh, come up with uh, specific recommendations, uh, general recommendations as well as specific recommendations on uh, each of the uh, justice institution. Most important recommendation is that uh, people are uh, not aware of most of the services provided by the justice institutions. Therefore, there, there is an urgent need to create awareness on the services provided, uh, various services provided by the seven I mean, justice institutions. institutions. The study points out that the seven institutions studied need to come up with respective SOPs which are accessible by the people. It also found the need to establish an independent grievance redressal organization to address people's grievances. Besides strengthening legal aid to the people, the study recommends the justice institutions to explore means to enhance access to justice services by all citizens regardless of the location or socio-economic status. It's very important that the, quality, the services provided by uh, the justice institutions are up to the mark. It should not be for the sake of uh, providing, but it should be provided provided from the heart level. Therefore, this is really, really important, uh, uh, really important because each and every citizen must have, have access uh, uh, to each and every services, services provided by these institutions if they need the service. According to the report, among the seven justice providing institutions, the Royal Bhutan Police provided the best services followed by Anti-Corruption Commission the Bhutan National Legal Institute and the Royal Court of Justice, respectively. On the other hand, citizens complained about the availability of Bhutan Alternative Dispute Resolution Centre's services to its paid members only. The study also shows challenges while availing OAG's services such as unfair prosecution, subjective view of charge-sheeted complaints and lack of awareness on services provided by the constitutional body. Participants from the Judiciary, the Bar Council of Bhutan, the Bhutan National Legal Institute, media and various CSOs participated in the launch event. For Namgyewan Chuin Poro, Devika Pradhan for BBS News. Paro College of Education will take an additional 170 art students into its Bachelor of Education in Primary and Zonka. The college has increased the intake for the courses after the Ministry of Education and Skills Development discussed the matter with the Royal University of Bhutan. The government has directed the ministry to facilitate and support Class 12 arts graduates into tertiary institutions 
through merit-based scholarships after the RUB discontinued some arts and humanities courses at Sherabzi College and the College of Culture and Language Studies. According to a notification, the ministry is currently discussing with tertiary institutions about the various program options, including nursing. The notification further stated that the details will be announced by the end of this month. Bhutan is to soon graduate from the least developed countries and the Prime Minister assured that it is a proud moment for the country. The Prime Minister also said that Bhutan is ready to graduate after two consecutive assessments and that graduation from LDC will not impact the trade agreement with the Government of India. As per the United Nations criteria, a country can graduate from LDC status if it meets three criteria. First, the country must have a per capita income of above 1,230 US dollars for two consecutive years. Furthermore, the country must have a human assets index above 66, which assesses a country's health, education, and adult literacy. Another criteria is the economic vulnerability of a country. Factors such as population size, remoteness, and dependence on exports of goods and services are considered. Bhutan fulfilled two of the three criteria in 2015 but did not meet the Economic Vulnerability Index. According to the Prime Minister, Bhutan fulfilled all three criteria in 2018. The Prime Minister during the mid the press session yesterday said that Bhutan might face a few challenges but the relationship with the Government of India will not change. Certain free aid and grant, certain Maybe few billion, few million dollars here and there. The national aid bomb only me. Biggest grant by far, GOI. It has nothing to do with graduation. It's between time-tested relation between the two governments, two countries. Mero. The development grants from the European Union will also not change despite graduation. However, tariffs will be levied based on the type of goods that Bhutan will export and import. Doing business and change jo, ati me me halam chi jo. That is, our goods will have to qualify to certain criteria, certain quality, meaning it has to be of better quality. And when it enters the first world market, EU market, they'll put a small tax. Toto underdeveloped ka elderly jo achin tax mafaba jo me. Graduate yaso achin, depending on the goods that is being imported or exported, tax chungu chi jo. Maybe 0.2%, 0.5%, 1%, depending on the goods. Although Bhutan is graduating from LDC, neighboring countries like Nepal and Bangladesh have decided to postpone their graduation. Devika Pradhan for BBS News. The government has initiated works for the country to join the WTO, World Trade Organization. However, there are dilemmas over if Bhutan should propose the membership now or after graduating from the LDC category. The Prime Minister Dr. Lotus Hering said the ministry and agencies concerned have been instructed to study the processes of the accession procedure and advise the government. Joining the organization will enable Bhutan to trade with 59 additional countries, but there will be also several compliance costs. If we are able to ride on it, we might be able to take advantages of it, being a member. Right, Bema Subachin, the Namisimiji Kepso Mithonio, to the Kuponga Sawachin, the Radi Mipovnio. So I mean, the process Namisim long ime, cabinet is ready, Bhutan should be ready. Uh, this is the game played by developed world. Me. If Bhutan is able to play the same game as a developed world, it's only to our pride. FJ sector na ngachi country na invest be mid maashuchi oni me LDC be hui khablu ziwachin da certain benefits la which can continue the ngachi ge after LDC also chi di WTO na ziwachin duty di it cannot be more than 10 percent or it has to be 5 percent semi ji dula ta 5 percent go jago ke go ziwachin then we will be losing about uh, 900 million tax say there are a lot of uh, compliance costs but it is ultimately the Vikara benefit bume. the country has enough foreign currency reserves to meet essential imports for 13 months the minister of energy and natural resources loknath sharma said this during the 49th meet the press session recently 
the minister said, putting a moratorium of imports on non-utility vehicles helped retain over 2 billion yetam worth of foreign reserves in the last six months. The constitution mandates the government to maintain a foreign currency reserve to meet a year's worth of essential import, which is 603 million US dollars. And somebody was asking whether moratorium and vehicle has helped us or not. It has really helped us because half a year vehicle import ki data tauda, it's two billion the half year linara vehicle import biumela. Keeping the moratorium and vehicle, it, it helped add it uh, to, uh, uh, to our reserve session. That is why it really helped uh, uh, to prevent the outflow of the uh, reserves. Uh, 2 billion days, half year and Judo Yumidi, Nachi Kanza Gesuchi, Darebi of the 13 month days, essentially import the reserve of the Lambe Sishunibain. Prime Minister Dr. Lotus Hering will be re contesting the upcoming National Assembly elections. He announced this at the Meet the Press session while clarifying speculations regarding Dasho Sonam Kinga possibly replacing him as the new DNT president. He said it is not decided who will head the party and that Dasho Sonam Kinga has refused to take over the presidentship as of now. If Hemalamidi, Bodgoni to Miss Lokuku Ime, Ko Shop Chap Chop Ime, the Tosam Jimire, Tengale Shaba Puni, Gomati, Nagi Jusono, Mare Begono Suchi, Charusuge, Beda, so the low, the Tube Beda Gese. Tarsum Kinga Dangi Nachi Pane Ludi, there's news in the market before he joined DNT, Co Party to form Benime, Sim News, the correct Inla. He was actually going to form a party. Techipana Party Sapni Tunsi. He sincerely believes that there is no room for another new party. Ani Mipshesile, then he decided to join DNT. But today Tashtam Kinga repeatedly tells me that he is only a candidate from Pasam Shongfu Sedebne Kogi, while we need a leader to lead the party. If I'm interested, I'll be happy. It's an honor me. If Tashtam Kinga is given, he's even more better me role. Healthcare service across the country is expected to become more efficient. The Health Ministry officially launched its Electronic Patient Information System, or EPIS, recently at the National Referral Hospital. With the launch of the system, healthcare centers across the country will soon start keeping track of medical records online. The system is a part of the Digital Drukil flagship program of the 12th five-year plan, which is expected to transform Bhutan into a smart and inclusive country by harnessing the potential of information and communications technology. The EPS project is one of the key components of Bhutan's national e-health vision and action plan. The system will enable healthcare professionals and patients to access medical records online, including test results. It is expected to provide healthcare professionals with comprehensive and up-to-date patient information, which will help in making more informed decisions about patient care. Health Minister Dijin Omo said that the system is unlike any other system launched prior, adding that it touches the core of humanity. To also ensure accountability, patient safety, quality of care for the patient, and for the nation, this will ensure that our plans are based on evidence. However, the project officials said they are expecting a few issues in the initial days. I think in the initial stages, because like we did uh, test it, but then this is not really in the uh, actual environment. So once uh, we actually start using it and we, from that learnings, I think we will have to kind of fine tune the system. Uh, but in the longer run, I think like we are quite confident that it should uh, work. But uh, maybe for the next uh, few days, I think we will face uh, some issues which we are prepared to tackle. Besides, the country is expected to ensure efficient use of drug in healthcare centers across the country. Healthcare centers across the country will start using the system from Monday. Karmasam Denwongda for BBS News. Expect to be fined if you are caught disposing waste illegally while you are on the road in Bunaka. 
The Punaka District Administration has completed works to install CCTV cameras along the highway between Punaka and Thimpo. The district started this initiative last month to address waste management issues along the highway. The Punaka District Administration has completed installing CCTV cameras along the highway between Lamperi and Somningthang. The cameras will capture those who throw waste from their vehicles and the Punaka District Administration will impose fine accordingly. The cameras are installed not only along the highway but also in recreational sites and picnic spots as Punaka is one of the popular pilgrimage and tourist destinations. We have installed CCTV along the highways, but the exact locations are not shown. Some cameras are visible in certain places while others are not. So please refrain yourself from throwing the waste. If anyone throws waste, they will be recorded. Since the camera is backed up by solar power, it will operate and function even during night time. This move by the district administration is a step toward making Punaka a waste-free society. According to the Waste Prevention and Management Regulations, the fine for littering at any public place is 250 ngutam. Likewise, those found dumping waste in the environment are fined 3,000 newtum. For Kezang Tile in Punaka, Kinzang Hadden, PBS News. Travelling in public buses is a lot safer now. All public buses are now equipped with Global Positioning System or GPS to ensure public safety. The system, used to track location, enables mo monitoring of the bus's movement and speed limit. In the event of an accident involving a bus, the system can easily track the location of the vehicle. Unlike in the past, passengers traveling in public transport are in safer hands with the installation of GPS in the buses. The project to install GPS in public buses, which began in October last year, ended recently. The system is installed in 207 buses as of today. The technology has a device to monitor the departure and arrival timing of the buses. It will also track the movement of the buses. This is expected to solve the problems at a greater length, especially when vehicles break down in the middle of the journey. It can also control reckless driving and overspeeding, increasing the safety of the passengers. Uh, passengers this sugi bus this time na journey mindu semigi that can be curb. Then the other security risks is overspeeding. That in our most of the accidents are due to overspeeding. With GPS tracking, you can exactly know the speed of that public transport through this uh, technology and GPS installed by me benefits the Namsami bomb barrier. GPS is very helpful for drivers like us. Technology can control the speed limit and overcrowding of passengers in the bus. GPS technology helps us in controlling speed. If our vehicles break down in the middle of the journey, we can easily get help from the Bhutan Construction and Transport Authority. The device really helps if a bus meets with an accident and rescuers need to locate the bus. It also really helps us in timely departure and timely arrival. According to the officials of Bhutan Construction and Transport Authority, the installation of GPS in public transport has increased accountability and improved customer service. The government has spent more than 2 million nitam for the project. For Ugendoji, Devika Pradhan for BBS News. People exiting the pedestrian terminal in Punsoling will no longer have to pay the user fee of 10 ngitam. This is in accordance with the Cabinet Secretary's notification issued last month. However, people entering the terminal will have to continue paying the user fee. Unlike the past, people can now pay the entry fee into Bhutan of 10 ngitam with either cash or online. 
The fee waiver while exiting the terminal is expected to make the process faster. For exit, it's waived based on the government directives. But entry in Shagumi, mainly because we have certain amenities uh, for the entry. You know, we have a huge walkway and then we have AC, the animal facilities, then we have the waiting lounge and also we have the dedicated washrooms. And so, so individuals who are entering, they can avail those services. So basically the nominal user fees is charged for those amenities also. Whereas for exit, we don't have uh, such amenities. Left. Immigration officials, when introducing the user fee system last year, said the amount collected would be used for the maintenance of the terminal. The regional director said the entry user fee collection will be enough to meet the expenses of the terminal. Meanwhile, the sustainable development fee for casual visitors for up to 24 hours in the southern border towns including Pinseling is also waived from today. For Kilidem in Pinseling, Namgidem, BBS News. Kasa is determined to bring back the famous Kasa Tachu. Restoration works, landslide mitigation and infrastructure development works, among others, are in full swing today. If everything goes as planned, people can expect to soak in the Tachu again by September this year. The Kasa Tachu site is going to get a new makeover with safer and additional infrastructure for the comfort of all visitors. The mochu that washed away the Tachu in 2021 has been diverted with boulder wall to prevent future floods in the area. The wall is almost 3 to 4 meters in width and 8 to 9 meters in height. The work is 90% complete. Moreover, the district has also built landslide mitigation wall on the opposite side of the river to prevent any future natural disasters. Here on, we are working on a lot of plans to prevent such disasters. Before, the mochu used to run right next to the sachu. However, after the flash flood, we have cut the mountain tops and pulled the boulders in the river to the side, built walls and made it very strong. We can assure you that there will be no damages due to natural disasters. Currently, infrastructure development work such as public bathtubs and shower rooms are ongoing. Furthermore, the district this time has also designated an area of recreation. This time, we have two separate male and female ponds under one roof and a total of eight ponds. We also have a new VIP pond. Previously, the area which had the Chortin is now going to be converted into a green area for adults and children to rest. The district initially targeted to finish the restoration works by June this year, but it got postponed until September due to delay in budget approval. A budget of close to 26 million newton has been allocated for the restoration of the hot spring and construction of the flood mitigation walls. For Kazangongmo in Gaza, Tsringdiki for BBS News. That's all for this week. Thank you for watching.